So hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. My name is Mojtava from KLUV in Belgium. And this presentation I talk about the simulation of biodegradation behavior of metallic biomaterials and using HPC techniques to have like more efficient simulations. So uh, talking about biodegradable metals, we are usually referring to zinc, magnesium, and iron. And we mean that we put some materials inside the body and they gradually disappear and get absorbed, replaced by new tissues. They, have metal, they are metals, they have great mechanical properties, also positive contribution to body metabolism. But the thing is, their release profile should be tuned based on different applications. As you can see, there are a variety of applications for metallic biomaterials. And then we should tune their behavior. So the problem that we are facing is a tuning by degradation rate to the rate of regeneration of new tissue and also optimizing these implants based on this released profile and tuned profile, let's say. So for doing that, instead of you know, taking uh, an in vivo or in vitro approach, we have, uh, we have developed a mathematical model of the biodegradation process that can be linked with uh, you know, other models in tissue engineering like tissue regeneration models. And then these models should take into account the environment, like if it is in a bioreactor, in a test setup, or inside a body. So for doing that, this is a typical approach for most of the projects that the underlying phenomena are converted to mathematical models, and then these mathematical models to computational models. So in this project, the phenomena are the chemistry of biodegradation in the first place, and then the physics of perfusion fluid flow, if you want to have like hydrodynamics condition in experiments, and then biology of tissue growth. And for converting this to mathematics, we have like partial differential equations describing this phenomena that are mainly reaction, diffusion, advection equations. But we also need to keep track of the change of morphology of these materials, especially in 3D. So we have like interface tracking methods. And uh, also for fluid flow, we, uh, you know, to, to, to keep track of the fluid flow, we need to also have Navier-Stokes equations built in into the models. So for solving this inside computers, we take advantage of uh, you know, well-known finite element and finite difference methods, as well as parallel computing libraries and open source solvers. So before going to a case study that I have prepared to present here, I will have a brief overview of how the model works. Uh, the chemistry of biodegradation can be complex depending on electrolyte or environment, but in, in, the, in the most basic form, the model should capture these basic steps that it is the, the solution of the underlying metal. In this case, it is magnesium. And then formation of some protective layers on top of it that they are also can be a complex environment depending on the electrolyte. And then the effect of the environment, different ions in the environment or in the electrolyte on this formation, on, on, on this protective layer. And also change of various side effects that we usually use, for example, pH that we usually use for validating the models. So in order to create the mathematical models, these chemist chemistry is converted to mathematical forms that, as I said, they are like uh, we have derived a set of reaction diffusion convection equations depending on the contributing chemistry that uh, we want to capture. It can be like five to eight different PDs at this moment. And an example for like magnesium ions can be like this. So this is an equation that we have for each component. And this equation simply describes the way that magnesium ions diffuse through the you know, surrounding environment, and the way that they are convected by a fluid flow if we have a perfusion setup, and the way that they react with different components, with other components. And then these equations uh, should be solved in a computer uh, in a computer setup, so we discretize the PDs using finite element, as I said. And then, uh, because we want to see the change of morphology in the implants, as I said, especially in 3D, we have an interface tracking method, in this case, level sets formalism for that. And uh, because of the type of mesh that we have, you will see it, we need to have like uh, employed HPC aspects in order to decrease the runtime. And the type of mesh we use in order to increase the accuracy of the interface tracking method, we refine the mesh on the interface. So for example, this can be like a setup for a, a simple screw in 2D. We label the domain into environment, and then the screw itself. And then we generate a mesh on top of it like this, and we refine it. So in 3D, it could be like a couple of millions of elements. And that's why we need HPC setup. 
So some basic simulation results that the model is capable of producing. So for a simple orthopedic screw, it can be like this. You can see on the left, release of material, in this case, magnesium ion to the environment. And on the right, that's the, actually the level set method showing how the morphology of the screw changes over time during degradation. And then, for example, in this case, uh, for tissue engineering applications, uh, porous scaffold. Uh, this is a formation on the right, on the left, sorry. This is a formation of a protective layer on top of it. And then on the right, you can see how it degrades. And it can, yeah, the, the, the initial state is also obvious via a transparent uh, surface. And this is for another uh, case study that we had for mandibular uh, scaffolds so they wanted to have like like uh, make it from magnesium biodegradable magnesium and we did this for them and then we coupled this uh, the output of this model to a mechanical uh, stability analysis in an offline uh, coupling manner but this is not a case study that I want to uh, talk about uh, before going to the case study, we usually deal with uh, simpler geometries to validate the models so this is a narrow cuboid that we had simulated and then we compare the quantitative output of the models with experimental data that we have. So the type of uh, quantitative, quantitative output that this model generates is like this. We can have different things like pH, as I said, and comparing it to like, the output that we have uh, obtained experimentally. And also, the kind, for example, this is very important, the hydrogen that is released during degradation or simply mass loss. These are difficult type of quantitative output that we can have. But for the case study uh, that we did recently in, uh, in collaboration with the University of Amsterdam was related to the uh, acetabular implants made from porous uh, materials. And in this case, uh, the problem was uh, in a revision surgery. So when we have this, this is a cup of the acetabular implant. When we have them implanted after their lifetime, they should be removed and replaced. But the problem is during the revision surgery, part of the newly, born, newly formed bone is also removed along with the implant. So solution to this can be making at least part of the implant from biodegradable materials, because you know that these kind of implants are not made of magnesium or iron. They are usually titanium, but we can have at least part of it from biodegradable materials. So when the tissue grows, bone grows, and heal, they disappear and absorb. So for doing that, uh, we had like this is not my project. This is a, pro a project of a friend of mine, and uh, in the in the first stage, he optimized the shape of the cup using a topology optimization approach, and then we're writing the stiffness based on you know comparing uh, the cases with you know, physiological and pathological cases, and this is the output. So filling that with a porous gyroid shape, and then uh, you know, using a tool that we have developed, uh, fill it with uh, TPMS lattice. So the output is like this, as you can see, that's a printed version, so that's not a rendered image. That's actually the printed version. And then we wanted to see how it degrades, how the degradation behavior, how it would be. So in order to do that, as you saw in the type of, you know, typical type of uh, the output of the model. We embed it inside another container acting as an electrolyte or surrounding environment and then refining the mesh on its surface. So the mesh would be like this containing 45 million elements. This is an illustration showing why such a mesh contains 45 million elements. And you can see it's fine, it's very fine on the interface. The red region, if you can see it based on the lighting setup of this room, is actually just a visualization of the real implant, but that's actually embedded inside a mesh. And then in order to simulate it, we had like different models that were simulated with uh, 2,000 to 8,000 CPU cores, and this is the way that mesh is partitioned among using mesh partitioning approaches to the available CPU cores and uh, because the mesh is mostly refined on the interface, you can see that the, the partitioning is also has a lot of partitions on the interface of the scaffold. And then uh, visualization done also because of the size of the output. This is also uh, parallel visualization. This is uh, you know quantitative output. So in a server client uh, architecture for, visualiz uh, for visualization. So as you can see, that it, it degrades faster in the parts that are more porous, and it can be very well related to the physiological condition or the topology optimization output that can be further discussed. And, the uh, and this is also you know, uh, same uh, visualization from another angle, from another perspective. 
And for the uh, quantitative output, these are very fine, uh, uh, you know, cares that are usually obtained uh, more stepwise in experiments. And this smooth behavior is because of the resolution that we, we use. And these are different, you know, saline solution, meaning that we have a, like aggressive corrosion environment, and the other one is more, pol is more like light, uh, moderated environment. And then a few slides on the output of this project as the, you know, the, the, the outreach of the project. So all these models, all these things, including Floyd flow models, also a bit of tissue growth are now fully assembled into a multifunctional 3D simulation code for biodegradation, we call it biodeg. And it's available also with a cross-platform user interface. So the software is um, uh, a kind of, you know, uh, it includes pre-processor and post-processor, a very basic one, and it is it can be like it has a freefem and PETC background and C++ and Qt front end, and it is available as an open source tool that everyone can grab and uh, install and run on any operating system, so you can have the simulation on your uh, desired implants or scaffold shapes in 3D. And all the tools that I use in this, I didn't talk about the technicalities, but all the tools that I use in this project are open source, meaning that whenever you get, grab the code or interested to use this, uh, there is no need for any license to, to use. Uh, all the tools are uh, for different things, for mesh generation, for design, for partitioning, and also uh, solving the solutions, uh, solving the equations, and also post-processing, they are all open source. And I uh, highly uh, appreciate the, the help of the whole team, my team, and also the teams that I contributed to, uh, sorry, collaborating with, um, especially the people that directly uh, contributed to, to this project and finding agencies. Thank you so much for your attention.